the Forbidden City um, exhibition. This exhibition closes September 1st, so do yourself a favor and come down and see it because it's awesome. And I'm from Voice K. Um, do you mind if I ask you some questions? Sure. Um, so number one, can you tell us a little bit about your job at ROM and a little bit about your role in this exhibition? Sure. So my name is Courtney Murphin. I'm an interpretive planner at the ROM. And what that means is I come up with the storyline of exhibits. So for this exhibit and all the exhibits I work on, I help to come up with how we would divide the sections, what each section would be about, that kind of thing. And then help come up with ideas about how we're going to tell that story. So what kind of text do we need? What kind of labels? Should there be images here? Is a video a good thing to do here? All that kind of stuff. And then as we go, I do a lot of research on the topic so that as the curators write the labels, I can edit it and make sure that everybody can understand what the curators are saying. Because sometimes they say things really, really academically and sometimes we don't understand. Interesting. Um, so next question, can you tell us a little bit about um, the, this exhibition itself? Sure. So this exhibit is about the Forbidden City, which is the Imperial Palace from China. And for a long time, it was forbidden to everybody. That's why it was called the Forbidden City. And so it's one of the most mysterious places in the world. And for our 100th year, we thought it would be a really cool thing to do to let people have a look inside of this forbidden place. So we guide you through the exhibit from the more public areas of the Forbidden City into the most forbidden areas. And you get to see some of the really exclusive stuff as you go through. So how many, pe oh, who, uh, how many people were involved to build the building of the exposition? There were a lot of people. So you, there's a list of people at the end and there's probably almost 100 names on that list. Um, that includes people who built the actual exhibit itself. So there's designers, there's myself, the interpretive planner, there's curators, project managers, the people who install the artifacts who are specially trained, multimedia specialists, and then there's all the people outside who coordinate the programs that go along with the exhibit, who market the exhibit, do the advertising. And for this one, we worked with curators from the Palace Museum. So we had extra curators from China helping us out with this one too. So there were a lot of people involved in this one. Okay, um, second question. Can, how long did it take to build the building of expedition? Um, it took about two years to plan it. So it started with the curators going back and forth to China to go into the Palace Museum and choose what artifacts they wanted to borrow. And that took a long time, about a year and a half. And then once they picked their list, it took us almost a year to actually build the exhibit from scratch all the way up to what you see now. Yes. Where did all these things come from? Like, like specific, specific city or province? So all of these artifacts came from the Forbidden City itself in Beijing in China. It's right at the center of Beijing and we borrowed most of them from the Palace Museum, which is what the Forbidden City is now. But some of them also came from our own collection at the ROM, but they were originally from China too. Oh, okay. Um, so then, like, about how much money th does this cost? Um, these pieces are some of the most exclusive, most valuable things in all of Chinese history. They are really the treasures from China, so they are really valuable. Um, so could you point out, like, which one is the most expensive one? Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to tell you that, but we have a chicken cup. A lot of people know about it. the chicken cups are really special pieces from Emperor Qing Hua. And they're really valuable. They're really, really rare. They didn't tell me how much the one in our show is worth. I'm not allowed to know that kind of information. But one of them was sold in an auction in Hong Kong this year for $36 million. Talk about 36 like, big houses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so these are some really special pieces. Um, so um, did, have you met like any problem or, or like um, challenges along the way building this exhibition? Um, I think our biggest challenge was the Forbidden City is really big. The real place is really big and our exhibit hall is not that big. So I think our biggest challenge was how do we make it feel like the Forbidden City when we can't really recreate how big it is. So we tried to simulate things like the gold elements and how how lavish and intricate and, and big open spaces like this as much as we could but that was a big challenge then you, you did a pretty good job then <laughs> oh good thanks <laughs>
Okay, um, th thanks for your time. No problem. Um, so Emperor Cheng Wah had this cup made, especially for his mom, because his mother liked really little things. So he had some special cups made that were really, really little and really fine. But the technique he used was so special that later in history, other emperors tried to copy it, and they could never copy just how well made this cup is. So they're really the only ones that were ever made to that that quality and just because he wanted to do something special for his mom so it's a really sweet story and there's so few of them left now they're so rare that the curators we were working with from the palace museum who've worked their whole lives at the forbidden city they came here to install this one with us and it was the first time they had ever seen it even the curators who worked there their whole lives had never seen it in their own collection that's how rare it was so that's why it's so expensive Hi, my name is Jasmine, and I'm from Boys Kids. Is it okay if I ask you some questions? Absolutely. I have two questions for you. The first one is, what is your favorite of the exhibition? That's a tough question. I have a favorite artifact, which is a puzzle that the kids in the Forbidden City used to do, and there's a whole bunch of blocks and they have to rotate the blocks and try and find the matching pieces and put it together. And it's really hard. We tried to do it and we couldn't even do it. So wow. that's really cool. And then I have a favorite area in the exhibit, which is the inner court. So right now we're in the outer court section and everything's really big here, right? Mm -hmm. And very yellow and very red. And then as soon as you go around the corner, you go through a curtain and everything is very dark and blue and very, Homey, it feels more like home, and that's my favorite area of the exhibit. Interesting. My, my second question is, what inspired you to do this job? I love stories, and I love learning, mm -hmm. and so my job really combines both of those things. I always used to come to the ROM when I was a kid and when I was a teenager, and then I learned that I could tell stories at the ROM and I could keep learning through my whole life. Every time I do a new exhibit, I keep learning stuff. So that was my inspiration was I just love history and I love knowing where things came from. And now I get to do it forever. Wow, very interesting. Thank you for timing with me. You're welcome. Ancient Chinese words. Two, one.